Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to go through and show you a breadboard power supply. Now I'm going to go through the specs of the board, how to set it up and also test it. So let's get into it. All right, so the board itself is actually called an MB102. Now it's a breadboard power supply. This power supply plugs into a wide range of breadboards that allow you to basically have a secondary supply that connects up to the rails and that way you're not using all the power directly from whatever the microprocessor is that you're using for example an arduino or raspberry pi or whatever it is as for where we can get these you can get them from a lot of different online places so you can get it from ebay aliexpress there's heaps of different places you can go but i've got a couple links in the description below if you want to click on those but Wherever you get it from, they're usually only a few dollars with the shipping, so pretty cheap. Now, you can see here there's three different models. Uh, you've got the black, white, and the blue ones. I'm going to run through the difference between them a bit later on in the video, but for this video, and primarily because it's the one that I purchased, I've got the black model. It has more components on it than the others, but I'll go through the others later on. So you make sure to stick around so you can see all of the details. Now, specs of the actual power supply. If I run from the top down, basically we have the input voltages, which is that DC barrel jack that connects in. You've got 6.5 to 12 volts. Now, I believe I had another one of these, which I put 12.6 uh, volts uh, into the input and I believe it fried it. So you want to make sure to keep between those input voltages. Um, I had to buy another one. So hopefully you guys learn from my mistake and don't have to fry your board. Now the input channels, we've got the two rails on the side, which I'll show you when I plug it into the breadboard. But basically it allows us to supply two rails uh, independently. They can be different voltages, etc. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but for those voltages, we've got a choice between 5, 3.3, and then also 0 volts or off if you want to disconnect it. Now, the maximum output current is 700 milliamp. Now, if you go over that, you would want to run some type of uh, power supply direct into it. If it's a 5 volt power supply, you would make sure you've got the appropriate size. This one's handy for doing a lot of uh, setting up of things and testing things probably not the best to be running your entire project off especially as you get further on down the track in uh, developing your project you would switch across to a dedicated power supply which is more appropriate now it's got those mail headers to select the voltages i'll show you that a bit later on um, there's an on off switch to turn the unit on and off now We've got the USB input and that DC barrel jack as well. So depending on what input you're actually running and you've got LEDs so you know if it's on or off and the dimensions are all pretty similar with the width. Now the length obviously you can see between the three models a little bit shorter as you go through those three different models but depending on what you need and your outputs etc depends on which one you would want to choose. All right, so we're going to jump across to the actual unit itself now, um, and we've got our breadboard. Now, as you can see, you've got the rails, the positive and negative on both sides of the breadboard. You want to make sure that when you're attaching these power supplies, you get it lined up properly. You can see on there the plus and minus. If you put it this way, you'll actually reverse uh, that plus and minus, which is not what you want to do because you'll fry some stuff. So you've got to make sure you put it the correct way and on the correct side now that's this side over here now what i'm doing is lining it up in the positions where these pins can go these pins actually connect up to the rails now for some reason there's not a second double pin on the other side of this board usually there is but we've got the options then to plug it then into those slots as you can see there's five pins per that rail on per each section we can add it into the last one which gives us a little bit extra room on the board but it is a bit flimsy kind of bouncing around um, and you do have that uh, exposed pins over there which could be an issue if uh, you put something underneath it or, or whatever 
Um, but yeah, we've got the positive and negative running down through those rails now. Um, we can actually move it to where it would normally sit across taking up those five uh, pin slots, which once you push it down into it, it's a lot more stable and it doesn't move around as much, uh, which is handy. You don't want it to be moving much, but at the same time, there's a shorter width of or room left on the breadboard. So depending on the size of your breadboard and what you've got connected up, uh, where you'd want to put it. So we have that DC jack there and the USB connection. We've got the power on and off switch, which powers that DC uh, plug in through the LED, a bunch of electronic components, which obviously change the voltage levels and um, control all that. And then we come across. So that brings us to our first block of pins here, which is the eight pins. Now, what we have is a set of pins where we can actually run off to let's say if we want to uh, run to a fan or a, another device like a relay or something like that we have those pins where we can actually run off uh, and supply power to something so instead of actually running it down those rails of the breadboard you've got these extra set of uh, connectors so we have the actual active um, or the positive on the left hand side and the right hand side we have the ground rail so you can see there, you've got the five volts on the top and there's two of those. And then there's the 3.3 volts on the bottom too. So you would just have a plug that would run across the five volt and the ground and you'd plug that in and you'd be able to run that wire off to something else and, um, and actually supply power to it that way as well. And that way you've got extra power instead of running it direct out of um, the, the rails or out of the breadboard itself which then leads me to the rails on the side. So we have uh, the positive and negative on each side, which we connected up before, but we also have these header connectors or the jumpers that we can move across and we can shift from what voltage we want on the rail. So you could start off and say, well, actually I want 3.3 volts on this rail uh, or I want five volts on this rail. And you can choose independently and have, let's say for example, you could have the left rail being five volts, uh, which will have its five volt and its ground. And then on the right hand side of the board, you could have 3.3, or you could take the header jumper out and you could just have it off all complete, like completely. So you can actually see here, I pulled apart this header uh, connector so you could see what was actually inside it. It's basically just a metal, uh, piece that connects the two pins together uh, and then it has that plastic covering over the top so that's all it is just basically connects the two pins together so now i'm going to turn the unit on i'm going to supply it uh, via a 12 volt power supply uh, which you can see i've got plugged in there via the dc jack push the uh, switch button on and that led lights up supplying power through to the whole unit and I've got the rail on one side or that top side there being set at five volts, which runs down the rails. And you can see I've uh, teed off from the positive and negative with a bit of a jumper wire. So when I put the multimeter on it properly, uh, you can see that we'll get five volts there. Um, now it is a little bit less whether or not that has something to do with my power supply. Um, or my multimeter might be a little bit off. All right, so now we're going to look at the other side, which is the 3.3 rail. I do the same multimeter measurement, and you can see there, 3.3, which is what we were expecting. So if you wanted to, you could switch it across to the 5. Now, obviously, with the 3.3, I can plug an LED direct into it via the positive and negative, and then you can see it lights up fine. So... The other thing I can do is put it across those uh, available power pins there. And that's the 3.3, the, the ones that are closest to the breadboard, 3.3 uh, volts, which is fine for the LED. If I put it on the 5, it would fry that LED. So I'm not going to do it, but you would obviously test something else on there if you wanted 5 volts. So for the actual power supplies, the different models, we have the one that I've been showing you now in this video which obviously has the dc plug the usb a and then we've got the two separate rails 
and then we have the extra power connectors off uh, that you can use for other devices. Um, it's a bit more bulkier as we come down to the next model, the white one. We basically have um, a similar type of setup. It's a bit smaller board. We'd still have the DC plug. We have a micro uh, USB instead. So you would need to use the appropriate cable for that. Now, with those yellow uh, pins, we have the five volt and ground power supply that you can get from that one. And then the other side is the 3.3 volt and the ground. So you would supply additional things from that. As for the switches, uh, it's a two-way switch. So you can actually have five volts if you switch it on the right hand side the way we're looking at it now and on the left hand side it's 3.3 but it's labeled on the actual uh, just above the switch as well other than that they're exactly the same as the other black board now for the last board the blue one we still have that same dc jack in the side this time we have the usb on the other side it's even smaller uh, size than the white one uh, as well the only difference is we lose the ability to power off onto uh, another component or something. The jumpers that you can see where the arrow is pointing is to control whether or not the rail on the left or the rail on the right is either 5 or 3.3. So similar to in the white one where it has switches, this blue one only has the jumpers. It doesn't have any other uh, power connectors available. All three of these boards have the LEDs to turn them on. Uh, doesn't have the switches to power on for that DC uh, for the other two. So you would just be plugging it in uh, when you actually uh, want to actually turn it on. Uh, or you'd have the switch on the power plug or something like that to turn it on and off. So really just depends between these three units, the size what you're going to use it for you know they've all got the same 5 volt 3.3 but obviously uh, the sizing is one factor and whether or not you're actually going to be switching voltages uh, regularly you may want to select say for example the white one if you're going to be switching between 5 to 3 you just got to remember whenever you change it if you've got things plugged into it that let's say it's a 3.3 volt uh, chip or module you don't want to just all of a sudden put 5 volts into it. It could damage the chip. So you just got to be careful. Uh, hence why the jumpers sometimes a little bit better. If um, you're not quite sure of what the voltages are going to change or not. Now I didn't really go into too much detail around uh, actually why you would want to be using this power supply for you know certain things plugged in. Uh, certain devices or whatever it might be. Modules or servo motors. Things like that. You just need to really understand your project and what you actually require because like I said earlier on, you don't want to run too much off your Arduino uh, or whatever the microprocessor is that you're using um, because you could either fry it or if it's got the voltage protection in there, it might turn itself off. But you just want to avoid causing any of those dramas. There is some things like servo motors that sometimes if you don't have an independent power supply like a, one of these breadboard power supplies. It has this little shutter type of movement so um, from interference and stuff. But at the same time, whenever I'm uh, running these type of breadboards, I like to uh, bridge across the ground rails um, and also the 5 volt as well and run it from that same power supply um, by keeping that consistent uh, ground you tend to make sure to avoid a lot of issues with some of your modules or motors, things like that. But um, that's about it for this little tutorial. I uh, hope you like it. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Make sure to also subscribe so you can keep up to date with similar projects like this. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.